from family events to volunteer opportunities to community happenings, there is a lot going on in your community. Learn about all the possibilities and opportunities on this episode of Community Hotline. Welcome to Community Hotline. My name is Monica Weitzel. We're here in Gresham at Metro East Community Media. Happy to have you join us here tonight. And with me tonight, I have Magda Silva, who is the Senior Ex Account Executive for Be The Match Foundation. So nice to have you here. Now, I know when you hear the name Be The Match, that doesn't tell people exactly what it is you do. I know what it is because I've, I've checked into this and I've been a part of this for quite a while. But could you tell our viewers exactly what Be The Match is all about? Sure. So Be The Match is actually uh, operated by the National Marrow Donor Program. And what we do is we help patients who have mostly leukemias and lymphoma uh, and other blood diseases and blood cancers who need a marrow transplant to actually uh, survive and, and have a cure for their disease. And we do that by providing a, um, unrelated donors um, to patients who need a marrow transplant. Um, only about 30% of the time where th will there be a sibling match because that's where we go first wow. to see if there's a match for that patient. 70% of the time that patient will need to come to us to find an unrelated adult donor. So in order to survive, in order to live, so you're given the gift of life. We are given it's the gift pretty, of life. It's a pretty darn serious thing. It is, yeah. it really is. Now the, the bone marrow transplants um, and now cord blood also yes. right, has, has been going on for, for quite a while, but the Be The Match Foundation is sort of new, is it not? Is yes, it? Um, recently we've also created a foundation. Um, we, um, we do development um, to be able to uh, provide funding for the cost of um, doing the lab tests. Anytime that a, uh, that a potential donor registers to be a donor, um, it's a $100 charge for the lab fees. And um, so we also um, collect donations from, um, you know, from corporations, um, from different sponsors. Um, we also do a lot of fundraising through individuals to who would like charges. to cover the char help co cover the charges. Okay. It's totally voluntary though. We don't um, require that anybody give us a donation to enter the registry. Okay, it's so voluntary. somebody is interested in, in saving a life and mm -hmm. who wouldn't be honored to be able to save a life. I mean, sure. I, to me that is just a huge thing. And, and I know there are people that, that don't. There's people that are scared mm -hmm. uh, about the idea of doing a, a bone marrow donation. But if they were interested in doing it, and we can talk about that a little bit more, but if they're interested in doing it, how hard is it for somebody to sign up to be a, mm -hmm. a donor? It's actually really simple. It only takes about 10 minutes of your time. Um, it's a consent form that has mostly contact information, and it also has some medical history information. Uh, you do need to be healthy to be able to um, be a donor. Um, and um, then we uh, administer a, a uh, it's like a Q-tip. It's called the buckle swab. Well, you have one here, right? Yeah. Can I open too. this up and take a look at this? Yeah. So maybe please. we can get a, a camera on this. And yeah. okay, so this is what is sent to the donor, right? Yes. And this has in here. Well, there's little, four these, swabs. Actually. Four swabs. So mm -hmm. they are. They're like Q-tips. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they take this, and inside of your mouth, right? Yes. Just Q. imagine there's a T on your mouth, and that there's four quadrants, and you just. You swab um, inside and in the inside. cheek cells, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then you take another one and then you do a different quadrant and you just do all four and then we send that to the lab. So then they take yeah. them and you just place just them Just put them in, in the here. little envelope there, yeah. Just, they stick right in there. <laughs> yep. And then you can seal it up Yeah. and mail it in. It's all yes. pre-addressed, stamped. Yeah, it's barcoded um, so it's that- It's not painful, it's easy, <laughs> it's quick. It's extremely easy. Yes. The hardest part of registering is probably filling out the form. <laughs> Isn't that always the way? <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you know, the swabbing is pretty easy. It just takes a few seconds and um, you could save a life by, by taking these steps. Yeah. You know, I, I was talking with you earlier, Magda, and I, I signed up with Be The Match in 1987 which yeah. is a really long time ago. That's, that's actually when we established. Yes, yeah, it, was, it was brand new, uh -huh. and I think it was through the Red Cross at the time. Mm -hmm. I was a blood donor. Yeah. And um, 
and I just was called last year. First time ever that I got called and I'm, and I'm a match for somebody, which I, I find very, very exciting. Mm -hmm. um, the little boy who needs uh, the transplant is not ready for one yet for a variety of reasons. And you told me some possible reasons why mm -hmm. he may not be ready, but mm -hmm. this was sent to me. And now, you don't, do you do this, you don't do this until you're ready no, to actually, be a match, or do you usually do it now right away? We would do it now right away. Okay, because back then, we didn't do this then, but they sent this to me after they yeah. told me I was a match, so I did the little swab thing. It was so yeah, easy. Yeah. The way we do it now is there's various ways. You can order a kit online at bethematch.org. Okay. Um, you can also go to a marrow donor drive. Um, you can go to our website and um, find where, you put your zip code in and do a search to see where there's a marrow drive near you, and we administer the test right there. But if you do it online, we'll mail you a kit within 48 hours. You swab yourself. We give you mm -hmm. instructions and then you mail the kit in. Right. And then going to a drive, you know, we would do it right there on the spot um, and we'd administer the kit with the swab. And so just, there's a couple so of easy. different ways you so can do easy. it. Yeah. And when you did it, we mm -hmm. used to take blood. Right, yeah. right. You, yeah, when I first, very first sign of yes, yeah, yes, it was a blood, yeah. a blood donation. So yeah. we don't do that anymore. It's, it's all done through the swab. Changed. A lot's changed since they 1987. Really That's yep. a long time ago. Yeah. So now you, you talked about blood or um, marrow drives. Yes. When you have a marrow drive, is it usually to benefit a specific person or is it yeah. just a general marrow drive? How does that work? Well, actually you can, there's a variety of ways um, a marrow drive comes to be. Um, one of the ways is if a patient needs a transplant and, he, and they can't find a match within a registry, um, they may have some marrow drives, especially, um, and one of the things we target is their specific ethnic um, group. So there's a better, a greater chance of finding a match Yes. in your own ethnic group? Most likely you will, because um, DNA is inherited, mm -hmm. uh, so most likely you will match somebody in your own ethnic group. So, but at those drives, we also encourage uh, everybody to register, sure, you know, sure. because most of the patients that are doing this, they they realize there's a need not only for them, but all the other people that, that are in the same predicament that they're in. So people are very generous and they want everybody to register. Um, another way that um, marrow drives come to be is through community groups, churches. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of college drives. I was just ah, at um, yeah. the University of Portland yesterday. And we, oh, we good. yeah, we do drives sometimes with uh, the blood bank and sometimes we do them just you know standalone with us being there and we promote those drives and I don't think people you know. realize how easy it is to sign up for this yeah and it's yeah. really easy to also hold a marrow drive you know yeah. all you really need is a little um, event you know organization um, some volunteers you know a space to do it in and you know we you know it can create some miracles there for people That's pretty cool yeah okay so say um, I sign up which I did and uh, I, I get call I'm a match and which would be a huge honor, I think, just to be able to know that you have the potential of saving somebody's life. Mm -hmm. That's a big, big deal. If you get and called even once to be a donor, mm -hmm. you can consider yourself extremely lucky. I think that's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. yeah. So I was so excited. It's a, it's a huge <laughs> deal. It is. Yeah, it really is. So tell me the process then. What, what happens next? Well, what will happen is we'll contact you, um, you know, via phone, email, mm -hmm. um, and mail, regular mail, and we'll let you know that you're a match. And we would like you to, re to get back to us as soon as possible. When you do that, then you'll be asked to go through a complete medical evaluation um, and we also do an information session with you so that you know exactly what's going what's what's going to happen and what this is going to entail mm -hmm. they'll also tell you what kind of donation that they're going to need you to make so there's two different types of donations there's marrow and then there's uh, PBSC which stands for peripheral blood stem cell donation um, these days, about 70% of the 75% of the donations are done through peripheral blood stem cells, mm. which is very similar to a plasma donation. If for, for those people that know what that's like and at that's, the blood bank, that's easy. I do very that all the time. Easy. Yeah. yeah. One of the things that's a little different, it might be a little longer donation, uh -huh. um, and we do give you five days of a medication to produce more blood forming cells in your body. The other one is the marrow donation, which most people are aware of, where we take a needle and we place it into your hip and we aspirate the marrow from your hip. But you do go under general anesthesia for that, which is um, something that a lot of people are not aware of. So those are the two procedures we would ask you to do. So you'll, you're told at the time which mm -hmm. one of those two procedures you're going to do. Then we would, over a four to six week period, we would make those appointments and work with your schedule to be able to do that. And then we also have to be mindful of the patient situation because at the time we're getting the patient prepared for that donation. So sure. it's a very, it's a balancing act, I'm if sure. you will. Yes, yeah. yes. And that's what would happen. So for the, for the donor, what, um, 
what can they expect physically as far as uh, recovery time and, and um, after effects, that kind of thing? Mm -hmm. So the marrow donation, um, you, um, there would be a, um, a period of maybe a day or two where you would maybe not be, go back to your, yeah, 100% <laughs> or go back yeah. to your normal functions, yeah. okay? Yeah. Um, and then but only a day or two. Yeah, a day or two, and then a two weeks of soreness in, in the lower back. Okay. Um, for the peripheral blood stem cell donation, the injections that we give you of the filgrastum, which is the medication we give you, they do cause a little bit of flu-like symptoms before the donation. Um, some people say they feel kind of muscle aches, mm -hmm. and then they do that for five days, and then, then you go in and you do the, the uh, donation, and most people recover right after. They don't right. feel anything, they feel right. back to normal, they go back to work the next day. So for the, the peripheral blood stem cell, it's a little bit of, of discomfort before, and for the other, it's a little bit after. So that's what you can expect. Tell me what the, um, I imagine you've talked to a lot of people who have uh, been donors and recipients. Mm -hmm. Tell me about some of the uh, people that you've talked to. Tell, you know, yeah. What is the reaction of somebody who's had the opportunity to donate and the opportunity um, to receive that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Donors um, always say that they would do it again in a heartbeat. Really? They wouldn't even hesitate to do it. Um, it was one of the most meaningful things they ever did in their life. I you have know, no doubt. That it was, you know, just really something that uh, they didn't expect to feel. They were a little fearful at first, mm -hmm. um, but once they did it, they, they had no qualms about it. Um, as far as the recipients, um, there's so many success stories out there. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about one. Um, she's one of my, she's now one of my volunteers. Oh, yeah, cool. I met her at a donor drive and I asked her to register because she looked, she was beautiful and young and healthy and I said, well, why don't you register? And she said, well, I'm a recipient and I can't. <laughs> and I said, well, wow. wow, you know, I'm so glad that you're doing well and would you like to volunteer with me? And she said, of course, you know, so right. she became um, an ongoing volunteer and now she's doing so well that she's actually in college. And she's going to be doing cancer research. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah. That's great. And she's doing very well, very bright girl. And, you know, she has a bright future ahead of her. And it's because somebody decided to take that step. It's amazing what you can do. It's such a simple, such a simple thing. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people don't realize how simple it is to do, how easy it is to do. And, my God, what a difference they can make. Mm -hmm. I know that... Um, you're probably your big push is for recruiting people and trying to get get more people mm -hmm. doing this. So if they're interested, they can go online and and to be the match dot org, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And I tell you, if if you have any qualms at all, read some of those stories on your yeah. website. I mean, I, I can't even read them without crying. <laughs> I know they're uh, very touching yeah. from both both sides. And now now people meet their donors often, don't they? They do. After one year, mm -hmm. um, if you both agree, the donor and the recipient agree, you can um, meet each other. Yeah. And I've seen some amazing, um, you know, reunions. Um, they're just, you know, you get choked up every time. Uh, I'm help sure. It. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. So now you have, um, you said you do some fundraising. You have an event coming up later we this do. year. Will you yeah. want to tell me about that? Megan? Yeah, it's our Be The One Run. Okay. It'll be our sec um, second annual here in Portland. Um, and it's on July 15th of this Good. year. And right it now. Should be nice weather, hopefully. Yeah. And right now we're recruiting for um, volunteers and organizers. Okay. And of course, people who just want to do the run. Um, corporations who want to do the run. Um, we're, we have corporate teams that are doing it. Good. So, and we're looking for also corporate sponsorships to, you know, be able to fulfill. The and the run is just, it's a short run, correct? It's 5K. That's we also easy. have a, a tot trot so the kids can oh, participate cute. as well. Okay. Yeah. And you can also walk it. Okay. So, oh, well, good. Yeah. For those yeah. of us who really don't like running so yeah. much anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what do you need? What can, what can our viewers do to help if they want to be involved with Be The Match and with the bone marrow um, and cord blood and all the, all this good stuff. Yeah, but so I recommend that you go to our website, bethematch.org. Um, we also have a lot of social media sites. Um, we have a YouTube site channel. Um, we have a uh, Facebook page. There's lots of inspirational stories there. Um, but you can register to volunteer um, Online. You can always use volunteers, I imagine. Yes, we can always use volunteers at Marrow Drives, um, also to fundraise and do fundraising events for us. And um, there's just a lot of ways you can help. Good. good. And then register, of course. And register, yeah. yes. And first yeah. of all, register. Yeah, register. Yeah. Have that yeah. And how old do you have to be to? 
to um, register? You need to be between 18 and 60, be willing to donate to any patient in need and meet the health guidelines. Um, if you've ever been denied for, to be a blood donor, our, our um, guidelines are a little bit different. So for example, um, if you have had a tattoo or a piercing, um, low iron or have traveled, outside of the United States, those might be some reasons why you might not be able to donate blood, but we will accept you into the Merrill Registry. Good. So, you know, don't let that stop you. Good, yeah. good, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Magda. I think we're just about out of time here. So if people are interested, I hope that they go to your website and please, I encourage people to register for this. It's a huge thing and it makes a difference in, in the lives of, of people like my wonderful coworker <laughs> who has <laughs> received a, a transplant, people that are, um, that are otherwise wouldn't survive. So um, if you have any, any qualms about it, go to the website, check it out. You'll, you'll be glad you did. Thank you so much, Magda. Thank you. And don't go away. We'll be right back with another segment of Community Hotline. place to grow, to learn, to be happy, to interact, to play, to observe, to live. Parks enhance the health and quality of life in our communities. Support your local parks. People for Parks, East County. The League of Women Voters makes history. Our country would not be the same without their dedication. Formed by women who organized to win women the right to vote. It is now a co-ed organization. Studying, informing, and acting. Nonpartisan. Grassroots. Influential. Taking political stands on many issues. The League of Women Voters encourages all citizens to be informed and active in government. Join, Join the, the League, League of Women, women Voters of East Multnomah County, County in making, making history, history today. today. Volunteers are the cornerstone of local communities, and they enjoy the satisfaction that comes from being part of something larger than themselves. Multnomah County invites citizens to participate in projects that benefit the greater good of our residents. No matter where your interests lay, there is a volunteer opportunity for you. From helping families through hard times, to working on a citizen advisory board, to making your neighborhood the place you want to live, the opportunities are endless. Through offering your time and talents, you can help provide programs and services that benefit all of us. You have the potential to make Multnomah County a better place to work, play, and live. Volunteering builds skills, provides insight into professions, and engages people in important actions. It shapes both you and your community. Plus, volunteering is fun. To get involved, contact the Office of Citizen Involvement. Go to citizenweb.org. Shape your community. Volunteer. Hi, I'm Luke Perry. You're watching Metro East. Over 25 years of great community media. limited. No matter how great our intentions, on our own we can only stretch so far. But at Rotary, we believe the right group of people working together can make our communities, our world, a better place. Rotary. Humanity in motion. Están listos? Free GED classes. Are you ready? Classes gratis de inglés. Yo estoy lista. Transportation for free. I'm ready. Classes gratis de computación. Que listos. We're, We're ready. ready. Come to listos. If you can do it, you can do it.
What am I supposed to do with all these corks? Turn them into a cork board. What about all these floppy disks? How about a fantastic journal? Hmm, I wouldn't learn how to make cool things like that. Well, come on down to Scrap. Scrap has monthly workshops where you too can learn how to make great things. We provide everything you need. For more information, call 503-294-0769 or go to www.scrapaction.org. Scrap, create more, consume less. And welcome back to uh, Metro East <laughs> Community Hotline. Sorry, we're having too much fun here. I'm Monica Weitzel. We're here at Metro East Community Media, and I am talking with two of my coworkers from Metro East. This is Peter Goodmanson, who is a uh, community trainer and producer, and Taj Middleton, who is our Director of Volunteer Services and Community Outreach. Yes. Did I get all that right? Exactly. That works for me. <laughs> that was a lot. That was a mouthful. <laughs> So, um, Metro East is always doing fun and exciting things like yes. putting on this community hotline show, but mm -hmm. we have something kind of new that's coming up. But mm -hmm. before we do that, maybe you tell me a little bit about why you two are talking about this. Now, Taj, what, 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 what exactly do you do here? What, what exactly do I do? I interface with the volunteers uh, oh. of the station, which is this station. I mean, we have staff, have amazing staff. But we are, are, we've got a lot of volunteers and interns that come through here, and I help to facilitate that, bring them in, make them happy. Hopefully they get everything they want out of their experience and they keep coming back, and, right. and that's what I do. And we have volunteers on this program, and now after they've gone through some awesome training with Peter here, or Peter OG, as we sometimes call him. Um, <laughs> did we have them come into this show, possibly? Uh, Shelby here as an intern. Shelby's an intern. We have Sharon and Martin <laughs> out there. Um, we have volunteers here. I believe Summer's here today helping us out, and, and it gives them a chance to actually use some of the skills they learn. So, Peter, as the producer and trainer, mm -hmm. What, your job entails what? Well, I just take them through all four core of our classes. Uh, the four core classes are field camera, we have basic studio, studio B, we also teach them Final Cut Pro editing. So there's a lot of different paths people can take. Um, I think what my favorite thing about doing my job is that I get to meet everyone who comes through here. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of one of the first stops for them, and it's, cool. it's just a lot of fun to see all that excitement and, uh, and enjoy people making television. It's great. It's great. And people come in here, and then after they've learned a few things, they can get out there and start using it, like working on this community hotline show, which is staff and volunteers, or other programs, other, other projects, and they can go on <coughs> their, own, their own television and uh, doing it quite well. <laughs> so now I understand that we have some other opportunities coming up for our volunteers, not only the ones we're currently working with, but other people in the community. Oh, yeah. And this is mm -hmm. the Neighborhood Conversation Project. Do I have that East, right? East Side, East Side. Stories. East Side the Story. Neighborhood Conversation okay. Project. Absolutely. East Side Stories, colon. The, <laughs> the Neighborhood Absolutely. Conversation Project. Absolutely. And this is a huge project that's starting this year. Okay. It's really, it's really exciting. Um, it was a grant that we pursued through the Mount Hood Regulatory Commission. And what this is, is it's, a, it's just as it says, it's the Neighborhood Conversations Project. The purpose is to create a dialogue amongst the, 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 the excuse well me. Well said. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm very, you know, um, I'm just so excited to be here Yeah, today. good, good, good. Uh, but uh, the purpose is to create a dialogue amongst the diverse members of the community, which w is uh, East Multnomah community. Um, and we're going to do that by p giving them, and you'll see these later, okay. later. Um, but we're going to do that by giving them some of our little mini cameras. Cool. Very easy to use, something that folks are already kind of using in the community these days, but we're going to put those in their hands. We're going to offer them training um, classes and, so, and different uh, forms of support um, through some of our written materials and on our website, or on a specific website, excuse me, um, in six different languages. Wow. So this is going I, to reach out to some people that perhaps we haven't been able to absolutely, help before. Absolutely. And the, the, the thing is, is that we want people to feel comfortable. We want them to share their stories. We want to connect um, East Multnomah County through 
everybody's stories because there's so many people, so many diverse backgrounds, so, so many, many stories. I'm telling you. <laughs> and, and what better way to do that to be completely comfortable than doing it in your own language? So, um, those <laughs> six different languages are going to be Spanish, Russian, Vietnamese, Romanian, and Parapicha which is a new one. I've, I've never heard of that language, and that's a new one to me, so I'm excited about that. Speak to me in Perpetual. I can't. <laughs> Don't I can't. forget number six, <laughs> English. English, so I'm like, sorry. I was going to say that's that again. So yes, that and, and in English. But um, so, so, so we're going to be offering training and different support materials um, in these languages. We're hoping to work with libraries and senior centers and schools and just kind of grab everybody and and bring them all in. Cool. Peter, yeah. Peter are we going to have translators, interpreters? That yeah, that's there? that's the plan. I mean, we're going to go out on site to all these different little nodes in our community, and uh -huh. it'll definitely help me as a trainer to have a translator there. Um, yeah. But we'll, we'll Until probably you've get... mastered all of those languages. Right, yeah, I'm still working on that, that part there. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, so we're going to have documentation that's in all those different languages. Um, we're going to have the person on site to help with that. Good. So hopefully it's going to be a really smooth, seamless way for people to learn how to use these cameras and really get their stories told. That's great. And then we'll put them on the website. And will these also be put on our cable channel? These, so what's going to happen is these are actually going to be put onto the website in some kind of um, map that we're going to create. So you can kind of see very, so can, very like, general. Yeah, and, you can click on the map and you can look at um, the different stories. And then some of these um, projects are going to be edited together. Mm -hmm. and shown on our channel as well. Nice. Yeah. Now, I, uh, Peter, you brought, brought a video for us that maybe we should take a look at now to um, um, kind of better explain how this is all working. And could you set it up for me? What's the video? Sure, yeah, we just sat down with Rob Brading, uh, Metro East CEO, and he talks a little bit about the project and we show some cool little scenes. So. Okay, well, let's take a look at that now. Metro East Community Media is a hub for citizen engagement, diverse voices, and modern multimedia technology. Starting today, we're branching out even further. East Side Stories is an innovative community building project that puts easy to use cameras in your hands. We'll teach you to use this technology to become part of a greater vision that represents the diversity and uniqueness of your community. Through this project, we want to inspire conversation among people of all ages, languages, and cultures. Together, we will paint a picture of where we live, how we live, and what we value. So please, join in. Make media that reflects your neighborhood. You are the expert. Share your story. All right then. Well, that was a great video, Peter. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah. you. So that's that video is, is definitely going to go on our website when we launch in full HD, so people can can watch it uh, on their computers, on their mobile phones. We just want to get the word out as much as we can, and we want it to look great. So we want a lot of people to participate in this. Yes. How, how many people can we? Do you have any idea how many people we can accommodate in this program? Well, how much? I mean, how many? How many cameras do we have? We have about fifty mini oh, camcorders that we nice. can loan out. Now, is that what you have in your hand there? It, it is. Um, these are going to be circulating throughout all these different groups in the community. So, um, you know, definitely more than fifty people are going right, to be right. uh, involved in this project. But uh, would you guys like to take a look at yeah, it? I want to see. Right, show, right. show us, Peter. <laughs> so this is the basic kit that people will get it's when so they, they come and check it out. <laughs> yeah, it's, they come in a bunch of different colors, you know, lime green. <laughs> and inside is a nice little pocket-sized camera. Um, is there a position I can place Here, this me, on the table? Let me hold this. Can I hold it? And yeah, you tell us about it? Definitely. Okay. So here's the camera. So these are mini camcorders. They're HD. Um, they're very rugged. And we expect that. It's the size that of a telephone, or yeah, mm -hmm. it's the size of a phone. Yeah, it really is. Uh, it's amazing how far technology has come in the past few years, even. And we can get a lot of great quality, good audio out of these cameras. We hope that people who are new to cameras will pick it up really easily um, because it's pretty intuitive how it works. You know, it's just a single button to record. Not a whole lot of work goes into getting a finished product out of it. I remember my very first video camera I got was like. <laughs> 
I was gonna say long. it was not that it was size. This long, and it was really heavy, and it was very complicated. This is easy. Be, it's I easy. Mean, this yeah. is great. I love this. And if people are still, you know, wondering yeah. about how to use something, if they forget it from their training, mm -hmm. of course we'll have some documentation that comes with it in all six different languages. Um, there are going to be links to videos that people can watch that demonstrate certain things, storytelling tips, all sorts of resources like that we hope to have on our website and inside the kit itself. What kind of stories are you looking for? We're looking for different types of stories. I think we're going to try a bunch of different themes throughout mm -hmm. the life of this project. And I believe the first theme we're going to be working with is, is family. Is that, yeah, would you family. say that's correct, mm -hmm. Taj? You, yes. know, you know what I want to hear? I want to hear stories about food. I want people to I, you talk know, about their, I'm sure. their, you know, like what do you, what does your family eat? Especially if they're from a, another country, you know, what are their, I'm you know, sure that's going to come wouldn't up. Wouldn't be a great thing? I mean, we, okay, that's we, just what I like. But, we, okay. have, we have <laughs> themes, but I'm almost pretty sure that within those themes, there's going to be some nice little nougats of moments that we're going to catch. And those are mm -hmm. the things that we want to be able to put on display for everybody. Just kind of, you know, go deeper. And help people to better understand each other too. Absolutely. You know, definitely. You know. Absolutely. I love that we're reaching out to other communities that perhaps haven't been served that maybe don't have access to video equipment now because they don't speak mm -hmm. the language to learn how to use it. They don't have, I mean, this stuff is not, you know, granted the prices come down, but it's still not cheap for everybody yeah, to go right. out and have, a, have yeah. a camera. So for us to be able to provide these, now granted we're not giving them away. We are, <laughs> we are checking them <laughs> they, out, right? Yes, they check them out. Yes. And, and oftentimes, um, t language barriers, um, sometimes generational barriers can, can be kind of a stopping point when it comes to technology. Mm -hmm. And so this is a way for us to go into the community and reach, like you said, those communities or those people that either don't have access to the technology or there's been a language barrier that's kind of kept them from getting their hands on this stuff. Or there's, you know, it's a gen it, there could be a generational thing too. Sometimes yeah. I know, like with my mom, it's like, I don't want any, you know, I don't want to touch it because I don't want to, you know. Um, but it's really easy. This stuff is really, yeah. it, it's not like the big, yeah, the, the big you know, the <laughs> you know yeah. tape recorder that you had. This stuff, this stuff is really, really easy to use. And so we just want to, we want to introduce everybody to this. Yeah, I can see that. I can see kids totally grabbing it like that, and they would have no issue with it whatsoever. But somebody, you know, maybe closer to my age, may, you know, kind of say, I don't know about really? that. Really? But well, I'm you're old, not that old. You're right. I'm not. <laughs> I love you, Tosh. Well, our, our um, goal is really to just get at least a few people um, who aren't, you know, youth that might pick it up really quickly to do mm -hmm. it. And so mm -hmm. once they do, maybe those other folks will go on the website and see that person doing yeah. it, hey, I can do this too. Yeah. I can yeah. pick it up just like you did. Yeah, and I think this is going to be so simple and so easy and we'll make it easy for them. Yeah. That it will encourage a lot of people to do that. I mean, gosh, you know, you get one of those, you know, you learn how to use and that. And a little you know? tripod too. Oh my little, gosh, little that's a tripod. I know, that is adorable. It's, it's very cute. Oh, uh, you, just, you just slip it on. I, th <laughs> I thought you had some funky little toy here, Peter. There we go. <laughs> that is too cute. So, I'm very liking fun. that. So we could, so essentially, you can set it right here. Peter and I could give our story just oh, like that. Oh, cute. <laughs> cute. If I had any grandkids, I'd send it to them and say, these are the, these are the strange people I work with. <laughs> That's great. I love Absolutely. that little tripod. So you have a little carrying case, you have a little tripod. Absolutely. So if people are interested, again, mm -hmm. you know, our hope is to go out into the community libraries, community centers, um, assisted living, just everybody. Um, and if people are interested, they can definitely call the station, contact myself, Taj, Taj. Middleton, 503-667-8848, uh, extension 326. Um, or they can email me at Taj, T-A-A-J, at metroeast.org. That's easy, that's yes. easy. And Peter, will you be involved in some of the training, I assume? Definitely. I, I plan to be probably. on site a lot. We're probably going to do some training here at the facility as well. Okay. Um, so I'll be all around. Um, I mean, you can certainly reach out to me okay. too. I'm and anxious to see. I'm anxious to see it all put together. I want to learn to use one too because it looks like fun. <laughs> so I want one. You will. No, no good. <laughs> good. Will you teach me? Good. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. That's great. Well, that's something to look forward to. So we're looking a little bit later this year. Watch for it. Tell me the whole name again. East Side Stories. East Side Stories. <laughs>
the oh. neighborhood conversation. Part. Oh, I thought we were going to say it in unison. Real oh, cute. Okay. okay, we don't have right. to. Not today. Go ahead. East Side, East Side Stories, Stories, the Neighborhood, neighborhood conversation, conversation Project. Project. <laughs> lovely, lovely. Nice job. And with that, I think we're going to close. Thank you so much. That was going out on a great note, you two. Looking forward to it. Thank you, Tosh. Thank, Thank you, you, Peter. Don't go away. We'll be right back with the I Have a Dream Foundation. I know you don't want to miss that. So this is Monica Weitzel. We'll be right back with Community Hotline. People are aware of the problems of hunger and poverty, but few realize how severe these issues are in East County. Every winter we find hungry and homeless people on our streets. Here at Snowcap, we combat these problems by bringing together the people who have with those who have not. Snowcap is a nonprofit organization dedicated to serving the needs of low-income persons living in the East Metro area. With the help of community members and the support of local businesses, Snowcap feeds over 4,000 people per month and distributes clothing to more than 1,000 people per month. You can help Snowcap by donating your time, donating food or clothing, or making a financial contribution. To find out more, contact Snowcap at 503-674-8785 or on the web at www.snowcap.org. Volunteers are the cornerstone of local communities, and they enjoy the satisfaction that comes from being part of something larger than themselves. Multnomah County invites citizens to participate in projects that benefit the greater good of our residents. Help provide services to thousands of your neighbors. Sound impossible? 1,700 members of your community are already doing this, and so much more by volunteering with Multnomah County Library. Library volunteers help their neighbors by teaching computer skills, shelving materials, and promoting literacy in the community. The library provides a wide array of services, including lending popular books and DVDs, computer access, and life-enriching activities. Give a neighbor a helping hand and spend a couple hours a week at the library, making your community a better place. To find out more about this volunteer opportunity, visit their website. To explore other volunteer opportunities, contact the Office of Citizen Involvement. Shape your community. Vienna Star was my guardian angel when my life was in shambles. They helped me find counseling and shelter. Vienna Star is great. They helped us pay our utility bills. And find health resources. I'm in college now because Vienna Star helped me find scholarships so I could put myself through school. Call 503-823-4000 to find out if Vienna Star can help you. Gracias, Vienna Star. This is the story about a group of kids who volunteer. Do something nice for someone. We fix stuff. Did some art projects with the kids. We fixed up this house. We worked in the woods. Cleaned up the park. Did something for the planet. We just did it. No other reason. And you know what? It was great. At first, they didn't know each other. Well, that didn't last long. This guy is really funny. We ace are my new friends. Are you into it? Call 4-H or check out our website at areyouintoit.com. When disaster strikes, emergency professionals may be overwhelmed. Can you care for yourself and loved ones until help arrives? Can you help neighbors amidst the chaos? Are you ready? Get ready. Join a community emergency response team and learn skills that will save lives. The City of Gresham offers free CERT training. Sign up for the next class and get ready. What is it like to have a loved one die? Each month, over 300 children and teens who have experienced a death turn to the Dougie Center for Grieving Children. Inside, they find a safe place where they can share their experiences and move through the grieving process. The programs at the Dougie Center are funded by private donations. Thank you for making it possible for kids like me to attend groups free of charge. The Dougie Center, because grief 
comes in all sizes. Hi, and welcome back to Community Hotline. My name is Monica Weitzel. We're here at Metro East Community Media in Gresham, Oregon. And here with us tonight for our very last segment of Community Hotline, we're going to talk with the I Have a Dream Foundation. With us, we have Tracy Rossi, the director of the Dreamer Programs. Welcome, Tracy. Thank nice you. to have you here. And Paz Ramos is the principal of Alder Elementary, the first Dreamer school in the nation. Yes, ma'am. Yes, something to be proud of. Tracy, let me start with you if you can, uh, if I can, and tell me a little bit about the I Have a Dream Foundation. What, what that's all about for those who may have missed the news and, and not heard what it's all about. Yeah, certainly. Um, so I Have a Dream has been in Oregon actually since 1990 and we traditionally adopted third grade classes. Um, so we have 10 classes that follow that model and we would provide three core services. Um, we would provide um, wraparound services, so academic tutoring or healthcare um, providers. We will help link kids with those resources. Oh, if wow. they have dental pain, we could help solve that problem so that they'd have. So um, by wraparound services, you're meaning you're not just focusing on the scholastic, you're focusing on the whole person. Exactly, okay. exactly, which we think is very important. Sure and it is. Another um, cornerstone of what we provided is um, making sure that each of our dreamers has a long-term relationship with a caring adult. So the mentoring relationship is really important and we think that helps um, them achieve success. And for us, success in the I Have a Dream model is um, academic success. So we want them to be successful in school, in college, in the careers that they choose. Um, and the third piece of that model is providing a cultural college. So inspiring a belief in our dreamers that college or a post-secondary certificate or opportunity is their birthright. And so we help provide those opportunities to reach that goal. Wonderful. Now, uh, something has changed here. It, it used to be you, there was just a, a class that was adopted. Mm -hmm. What's changed? Paz, do you want to address this? What, what's different now? Well, I think that's a, a big change that, that the board of, of I Have a Dream really went up, went up front and, and did. They, they want to change it to a different model where they can make an, an impact, not just on that class, but in the school, the district, and the community. And so uh, about three years ago, mm -hmm. about three years ago, they informed all the districts around who wanted to apply to be the first Dreamer School in the nation. And uh, there was five districts that applied and, and, and they chose three districts. And lo and behold, Alder Elementary was, was selected to be the first Dreamer School in the nation, meaning uh, all of our kids, ha uh, are, they, they're, they're privileged, they, they, they're gonna have the, the ability or the, the, the right to continue on into, into college. And you know, Alder is a high poverty school. Yes, yes. And, and so, well, congratulations, first of all, you. because that's, that's, a, that's a huge accomplishment to be in the only Dreamer school, not just a class, but the school in the nation. Yes, yeah, so tell me a little bit more about Alder. Well, Alder Elementary is, is uh, the second highest poverty school in the state of Oregon. Wow. We're about 95% uh, frame reduced. We, have, uh, we represent over 20 different languages. 20. 20 different languages. 20. We, we have a high population of, of uh, English second language learners. Mm -hmm. So probably about 75 percent of our kids, their first language is not English, not, uh. and so that, that's that's one thing that, that we we have to work with with our kids. Sure. We have about 20 percent mobility rate, meaning we we 20 percent of our kids don't stay with us when they start uh. in kindergarten. So that that's something that we're trying to really make sure our our families stay in Alder. And another thing that we have is we we have about uh, probably about 120 of our, of our kids are are homeless. Wow. Meaning living with somebody else or living in a shelter or, or so on. And, and these so, kids are ages what? Is this, this first kindergarten year? through fifth. Kindergarten through fifth. Yes, ma'am. And, and there's that many that are homeless. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's yes. got to be really, really tough. I mean, having English as a second language is hard enough. Being, you know, in a, in a poverty level uh, mm -hmm. home is hard enough. But, and being homeless on top of it, those are a lot of strikes against a kid. It is. It is. So, so what, uh, Tracy? Maybe tell me uh, what is the I Have a Dream Foundation? You, you said they they do the wraparound. Yes. The, the wraparound. I don't know what you call the wraparound program or or services. services yes. yes. So how does how does that help the kids? Yeah. So when we decided to adopt an entire school, 
Um, there were a lot of compelling reasons. Um, the relationship that the district has with Alder is a huge piece, so we have a lot of support from the district level and in the building. And what it translates into is that we are collaborating with a variety of different organizations um, that come into Alder and help provide a lot of those different services. A lot of partnerships. Yes. So in the um, on the academic intervention side, we have collaborated with many organizations, but some of them include Portland Reading Foundation, and they actually come in and work with the kids individually on very, very intervention strategies so they can bring their reading scores up. And again, um, the change in the model going from adopting a third grade class to having the opportunity to work with older kindergartners is huge because we're able to start much earlier and it's in alignment with the, the governor's initiative to really focus on early childhood education. So the academic services is one area. Um, Paz mentioned the mobility rate. We also recognize really quickly that um, the whole idea of the neighborhood is something that we want to have an impact on, not just the school, because mm -hmm. that's going to be important for families. So we're addressing things like housing. We're addressing things like jobs and transportation. Oh. So we're um, collaborating with a lot of different housing agencies, advocacy groups, so that we can provide some advocacy um, classes for families, but also looking at ways to leverage emergency services at Alder. They have some coming in already. Um, Alder is a sun, what's called a Sun School, mm -hmm. um, Schools oh, United Neighborhood, so mm -hmm. they have a lot of pro uh, programs that come in, but we're trying to identify gaps and barriers that we can fill those gaps as well. Now, does this just affect the kids that were in kindergarten when you were became a Dreamer School, or is this an ongoing thing? It's, it's it's, it's an ongoing thing. So it will remain a dream remain, school? The, the Have a Dream Foundation has signed a 15-year contract with wow. the district. Yeah. Nice. So, nice. So yeah, it's an, it'll be an ongo ongoing thing. A any child that comes into Alder will be a dreamer, will, will be affected by this. And so that's why it's very, very important that our parents understand uh, the importance of their kids staying at Alder. So what has been the response of parents? To this? Uh, the response of parents is we're really trying to communicate to them because we're kind of in our second year. Our uh -huh. first year was a planning year and, and we've, we had last year we had a, uh, a night where we just took a survey of our first grade parents uh -huh. and, uh, and really told them what it meant to be a, a dreamer for, for their kids. And this year we're going we're gonna to be looking at every grade level so really communicate to the parents what it means for your child to become a, be a dreamer at, at Alder Elementary, so so they understand what 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 really the the services are for their kids, mm -hmm. for themselves, and for the whole com community. What a huge benefit! Oh, yeah. Yeah. A huge benefit. Now, I was talking to some friends <coughs> about you coming on the program, and, and they were wondering, how do you get a child who's in kindergarten to understand or buy into the concept of? I want to go, I'm going to go to college someday or I'm going to continue. Uh -huh. how, how does that, how do you do Let that? Let him tell you, you'll be <laughs> amazed and you have to come visit because okay. it's all over the place. You can't escape it at all though. Well, the, the, that's one thing that, that's very, very important to kid, for our kids to see, college. Mm -hmm. See, see that, that college is important to them. Uh, as you know, as well as I know, a lot of those kids don't get that at home. Right. And so they huh. get it here at, at our school. I'm sure a lot of the families haven't had anybody that's gone to college Correct. in their yes. family. Correct. Right. And Possibly so, even graduated from high school in, in and, a lot of those cases, I would right. think. And prior to I have a dream coming in, my first year that, at Alder, we, we built this cultural college. We started with pen, uh, college pennants all over the place. Oh, yeah? We, we, we put a board saying, what college are you going to attend? And we put college pennants there. We put college banners in the, in the gymnasium. We have our, our board in front says, uh, Alder students are college bound. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and so at, at every grade level, we, we've, we've um, at every a college has adopted at, a, at, a, at every grade level. Oh, really? Mount has kind of a, a college has adopted kindergarten, yeah. first grade but with Portland Community College, second by Concordia, third by Lewis and Clark, fourth by Linfield College, and fifth by Portland State. I love it. That's and there, great. And there's more coming. And there, what does that mean when what, they've adopted what, the, the minimum that we ask our colleges to do is T-shirts for our kids, and college pennants or uh, or a banner that they can put put in, in their in, in Something their, to in kind of room. inspire them Correct. a little bit. Yeah. And we've, we've done college visits. Our last, this year, our first and second graders went and visited Concordia. Really? Concordia, right yes. Down the street from me. Right. <laughs> nice college, oh, yes. And so, yes. And, and so we're, things that the kids have never seen before, what college is really like. Yeah. And in fifth grade, uh, last, last year, our fifth graders, they, they took an overnight trip to <laughs> Linfield. They stayed in the wow. dorms. Oh, how fun. Professors taught them. Uh, and, and so, 
so yeah, so, so it's really the, the culture of college just ingrained in, into mm -hmm. the, the whole day. And they buy into that? They buy into yeah. it. We, we, yeah. we do cheers once a month <laughs> where uh, we, say, uh, we say, Kinder, Kinder, what is your number? And they'll say 2000, 2028. Uh. And we go all the way up to fifth grade, whatever, uh -huh. whatever class there are, there is when they're going to graduate from college. And at the end, we just say, Alder, Alder, where are you going? And they'll just say, college, college, college. Uh, so it's, it's really just implanting that into their hearts and their minds about college. And, and before I even came in, you know, you know we, would, we'd, we would tell our kids, you're going to college. But it was very difficult to continue that on. But now it's a reality because I have a dream is partnering with Alder wow. to help our kids be successful in, uh, as they get older. How great. So these kids are going, they're here through fifth grade. What mm -hmm. happens to them after they leave Alder? Well, from, from our school, they go to two, two middle schools, mm -hmm. Reynolds Middle School and, and H.B. Lee. And, and they still get followed through all the way through up to high school. They still get the services in they middle do. school. They do. It okay, continues. Okay, because I would think that's where, that's where you're going to no, lose them. No. Yeah. Yeah. The services are still going to follow those kids. Wow. So mentoring and the whole idea of getting the kids on college campuses. So making sure that during the summertime that mm -hmm. the Dreamers who are in middle school get back to those college campuses because it's going to have a little different meaning as they get older. Yes, it's it going to become it more of a reality. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely. And then even on to high school, making sure that we maintain a relationship and that we provide opportunities, summer um, work opportunities in the summer, internships. So our goal is to make sure that we stick with the kids all the way through because ultimately we want them to graduate from sure. college and have a post-secondary um, certificate, certificate opportunity. So yeah, that, this is just the beginning. So how long did you say that I Have a Dream Foundation's been around? Uh, 21 years. 21 years. So you've had some time to, to watch this grow. Yes. And, and how, what's the success rate like? And we had phenomenal success rate with our Dreamers. And we actually still ch have two classes of Dreamers that are, um, we have a, an 11th grade class um, where, that are housed at Vincent. However, they're at about 20 different schools. And wow. we also have a 7th grade class at Vernon. Um, but again, they're classmates at a variety of different schools, which is one of the reasons we thought that adopting a school would be helpful because as you can imagine, keeping track of those kids. Well, yeah. So, so what happens if, if these kids that are coming out of Alder then go to several different schools? I mean, you said there's just two different ones, but I mean, if they move away, they're going to lose some of that, right? Right. And that's yeah. why we're addressing... But hopefully you've made a difference already Correct. and planted that in their heads yes. anyway. And we're trying to incent them to stay. Yes. Um, yes. We really want it to be a school where they stay. And um, back to your earlier question about our success rate with our mm -hmm. traditional class dreamers, it was wildly successful. Um, kids were graduating from high school and having college participation rates at double and in many cases triple the rate of their wow. non-dreamer peers. Wow. Um, so we, we thought that was wonderful and we wanted to take our expertise in that area and apply it to to the larger school. We were happy with the results, but because we were, we called it an occasional miracle model, we were having huge results with the families and maybe their siblings would also benefit from some of their um, college readiness activities and work, but we weren't really having as much of an impact at the school or in the mm -hmm. community that we wanted. And that's what we hope to gain while we're at Alder. It's more of a holistic approach, very isn't much it, to so. the child. Mm -hmm. We don't have very much time left. Tell me, what, what can people do to help if they are interested in somehow becoming involved with the foundation or with Alder School? What can people do? Um, I'll tell you from a foundation perspective, we are a privately funded organization. Um, and so there are a lot of different ways for people to give their time, talent, and treasure. So if they want to come and volunteer, there are a lot of volunteering opportunities. We mentioned the long-term caring relationship with an adult. We love to have mentors and volunteers at the school. Um, huge impact to all of the kids. I'm sure, um, yeah. yeah. But of course, we'd also, if people are interested in um, learning more about the organization and making donations, we can show them a variety of different ways that their um, money is used with the kids, everything from reading to summer opportunities, the culture of college. So just let us know if people have more questions, we're happy to answer them. Great, right. I, I think the biggest thing that, that they could support us in is like she's, like Tracy said, our mentors. We, we need uh, caring adults that will take these this kids uh, uh, under the wings and, and support them all the way through. A lot of our kids don't get that support at home. Mm -hmm. Parents work, single parent. They don't have okay. time, they don't have the time. energy, they don't have, yeah. And so a mentor is very important for, for our children. Okay. And is there a specific time commitment you require, require for a mentor? Um, 
We work with a, a wide range of organizations. It's one of the nice parts. Okay. Paz calls it the secret salsa of the <laughs> Dreamer School project. So we have wonderful organizations that we've partnered with, family of friends, friends of the children, big brother, big sister, and Oasis, uh -huh. and Smart, Start Making Your Reader Today. Right. So depending on the time that a person has to spend, it might impact what organization they can come uh -huh. um, under. And so it could be a one time a week opportunity reading to kindergartners and Smart, or it could be in a community-based mentoring model where they hang out with a kid once a week off, off outside of school time. Great. So great. we'll work Lots with Lots of folks. opportunities. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you both so much for being on. It's, it's a great opportunity for the children. I'm so happy for them. I think this is, is wonderful. It's a, it's, a, it's a great thing to be involved in, I would think, watching, watching the difference you're making in these kids' lives. So thank you so much. Thank um, you. If people are interested, the IHaveADreamFoundation.org, is that? Is uh, that yes, I have a dream or I have a dream foundation or or dot org. Dot org. Yes. Okay. People can go on the website, check it out, get all the information they need. So if you are interested in making a donation, being a mentor, being involved, or just want to find out more, please go to their website and check it out. I'm so glad you stayed with us for this segment of Community Hotline. Thank you, Paz. Thank you, Tracy. So nice to have you here. I'm Monica Weitzel. We'll see you here next week. Thank you, Monica. Thank you.